Right, I'm very, very, very excited about this video. That is one of my favorite cars in the entire world. And as you can tell, the lights are flashing behind us. That is because we are gonna be driving a 911R today. And those things are absolutely mad. So before we get into it too, too, too much, I think the first thing we're gonna do is have a cold start. But welcome to a 911R video. Okay, I've got the key, 911R key. We're gonna do a cold start. There's something a bit different about this car. He has an acroprovic exhaust. feels light. It doesn't feel like you are being driven by the car. 
it feels like the car is an extension of your body. Everything you want it to do, it will do in the most natural way. And man, is it unbelievable. Not only does it look good from the outside, it is beautiful from the inside as well with this houndstooth interior. I am just in love with this car. It is the absolute dream. Now it's got plenty of grip, which we aren't experiencing today, but it is just an absolute beast is the best way I can describe it. Driving it around this street here, it gets a lot of attention. If you hear that, there's also a lot of sun that you can probably see in my eyes, so I can't really be on it too much. There's an extremely low speed limit here. But the 911R first impressions are that this thing is incredible. So how does this differ from other 911s? Now obviously you've got the fact that it's got the manual gearbox, it's got an auto blip on it, which really makes you feel in control, it makes you feel like a superhero most of the time and also allows you when you are driving this car in anger to drive it properly hard. And every bit of this car feels tailor made to give you the best sort of feeling in the world, whether that be the steering, the suspension, the sound, the gearbox, it is amazing. So I'm gonna let Andrew talk now because you have <laughs> also owned a GT3 Touring. And yes. A lot of people compare the two, but you yeah, can talk do. to us about some of the differences. You know, the funny thing is the 911R was a limited edition car and it really annoyed people because everybody wanted a manual 911 in sort of the GT category. Yeah. And when they only made 991, people screamed and yelled and said, we want the manual transmission. Yeah. So Porsche was smart enough to make a little extra money, and they decided to create the GT3 Touring, which on paper is a 911 that's got the same body, that's got manual transmission, and a, you know the four-liter engine. Yeah. But the main differences are really real. So in the Touring, it's a different engine. Yeah. It's a little heavier. It doesn't have the carbon um, fenders. It doesn't have the roof and all the kinds of things. It doesn't have the single mass flywheel either. Yeah. With all these little things. And um, also the engine in the 911R is a solid crank. Yeah. In the GT3 Touring, it is not. Yeah. Little things, little torque difference, a little bit of visceral feel. The way the transmission is, we're going to go straight up. Uh, okay. uh, we're going up Lombard Street shortly. I'm going to stay in this oh, lane. Oh, I see. Stay, stay, stay in this okay. lane. Um, so while, again, on paper, you have a stick shift or GT-ish Touring version. Watch out for the bump here. The... Um, when you drive them in practice, the cars couldn't They're be any same. more different. Yeah. Just there's that, what you were saying on the drive before about how visceral the sounds when you push the clutch in. Yeah. It sounds like a, like a dry clutch from an old Ducati. It's incredible. It's just that, and that's the fun, that's the beauty, that's the, the magic of the 911R. Yeah. And, uh, It'll go, never be replicated in the, in the near future, at least. No, straight up again? Straight up again. We're gonna keep going up these crazy hills, so. Theoretically, the Speedster will have the GT3 RS engine yeah. with the carbon fiber bits and be more like a 911R Speedster yeah. than it will be just a 911 Speedster. Okay. So, in theory, it will, but it won't have... This car, one, one of the magic parts is the, the rigidity and the way that the chassis is. And when you cut the roof off, it's going you to lose a lot of that. So. No. Yeah, although you were the Spuckster Spider the other yeah, day. Yeah, and I loved it. With yeah. no roof, I, I love a good convertible. You know what's insane, Andrew, is that it is an incredible car. It's slightly intimidating when you get behind the wheel, which not many cars are today. Because when you get behind the wheel of this car, you really feel like, okay, I'm at the wheel of a beast. And I need to treat this car with respect. But once you sort of get used to it, it's a very easy and usable car. Well, that's it's very much like the career GT is you have have to have a healthy amount of respect yeah but you also just need to enjoy it and you need to be able to throw it around and toss it around because otherwise you're just if you're tentative this car won't kill you if you're tentative in the career gt yeah problems yeah, yeah. happen so. yeah i can imagine and we will be seeing one of those later yes we will yes it'll happen eventually maybe not according to plan but, then but it will happen eventually yeah. today listen to this That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. Actually, I 
end, I know it was maybe not the fastest on it drive possible. We didn't have too, too long, but it was unbelievable. So huge thanks. Make sure you follow Andrew at Salazen on Instagram. And what a drive, what a car. One of my personal favorites ever produced. And it was just unbelievable. So I hope you liked it. Remember to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we're gonna be filming with the GT2 RS and then comparing this car to a GT2 RS as well. So there are plenty of cool videos on the way and I'll see you very soon. Cheers guys. Bye -bye.